So the future of Final Cut Pro is Apple intelligence. This video, by the way, is sponsored by Lens Distortions. Okay, I'm gonna be honest. I wasn't expecting much when it came to Final Cut Pro heading into WWDC 2024. I didn't even schedule a live watch party on this channel because I thought that Final Cut Pro wouldn't make much of an appearance, especially after it got much of the focus during the reveal of the M4 iPad Pro. Now, if you're thinking to yourself, Final Cut Pro didn't get all that much attention at all at WWDC, just a few mentions. Well, you're right. We saw Final Cut Pro mentioned during the segment on Vision OS regarding spatial and immersive video and during a demo of Mac OS when Apple debuted the new continuity feature called iPhone mirroring. And if you only saw those two things relating to Final Cut Pro, I get it. But for me, I saw quite a bit more. I saw that the future of Final Cut Pro is, once again, Apple intelligence. Now, before we get into gazing into my crystal ball to witness the future of Final Cut Pro, I first want to touch base on what we did see about Final Cut Pro specifically. So let's recap. Vision OS gets an update to its virtual display feature where you can pair the Apple Vision Pro with a Mac to create a massive virtual display. But now you have more size options. You can make an ultra wide display that Apple says is the equivalent of two 4K displays side by side. And of course, Apple gave some love to Blackmagic Design by once again showing DaVinci Resolve on this upgraded virtual display. Is this an earth shattering development for Final Cut Pro? No, but it is expanding the capabilities of Vision OS to better allow editors to use the Apple Vision Pro to edit everything from film and television to social media content. Where I think this is going to be the most important is in the post-production of spatial and immersive video. And you can really see how much Apple's betting on this being the future of content consumption. They've invested, what, zillions into the Apple Vision Pro, and they've further partnered with Canon and Blackmagic Design to develop camera technology that allows for incredible visual storytelling experiences when using an Apple Vision Pro. Canon is releasing a newer, more affordable stereoscopic lens for the Canon R7 and eventually other APS-C Canon cameras, while Blackmagic Design has created an entirely new camera system called Blackmagic Ursa Cine Immersive, along with an all-new video codec called Blackmagic Raw Immersive, which no doubt will not be compatible with Final Cut Pro. But the really interesting takeaway from this part of the keynote was Apple telling us that there will be an update to Final Cut Pro to allow for spatial video editing later this year. These will all be available to creators later this year. Now, at the time I'm recording this video, we still haven't seen Final Cut Pro 10.8's release, and with another update guaranteed for later this year, are we going to see an incremental update to 10.8, or will adding spatial video editing usher in Final Cut Pro 10.9, paving the way for the release of the inevitable Final Cut Pro 11 sometime in 2025? Or will Apple skip version 10.9 entirely and release version 11 by late November of this year? Now, they skipped version 10.9 of Logic to release version 11 recently, so don't rule that option out. With the M4 line of Apple Silicon debuting with the iPad Pro, Apple could plan to leverage new capabilities in Final Cut Pro 11 alongside M4 MacBook Pros, Mac Studios, and hopefully a Mac Pro that feels less like a Mac Studio that's in a bigger case. Don't you think it was strange that Apple jumped from version 10.7.1 to Final Cut Pro 10.8? I think in the 13 years we've had Final Cut Pro 10, the quickest jump we saw was from 10.2.3 to 10.3. So we're definitely in unprecedented territory here. Now, when 10.8 gets released, we'll most likely see a 10.8.1 within a few weeks to a month of 10.8's release. That's pretty standard. But if that's the last version we see before spatial video editing ushers in the release of 10.9, that, in my opinion, will just be crazy. And I would argue that adding spatial video editing, which ushers in a new era of visual storytelling, will be worthy of making the jump from 10.8 to 10.9, and possibly even version 11 if they have even more new features to add to the app, or if they overhaul it entirely to perfectly match Final Cut Pro for iPad, which, by the way, I think is absolutely inevitable. So just to recap, we're going to go from version 10.7 to 10.9 in the span of less than a year. That's a pretty big jump for Final Cut Pro in that time span. And I'll take it because I was ready for version 11 yesterday. Now, before I get into what clues I saw during the keynote for an eventual Final Cut Pro version 11, let's take a look at iPhone mirroring as it relates to Final Cut Pro. 
Craig demoed this new feature within Continuity and Mac OS, and my brain got all kinds of excited, so much so that I erroneously tweeted that Craig was dragging media between Final Cut Pro on his Mac and the Photos app on his iPhone. That's not exactly what happened. What happened was Craig dragged a video that he exported out of Final Cut Pro. He dragged that video from Finder on his Mac into the Unfold app on his iPhone. So my apologies for completely misunderstanding what was happening. But is this iPhone mirroring feature still impactful for Final Cut Pro editors? Possibly. My hope is that I can open the Photos app on my iPhone via my Mac and drag and drop videos and photos into Finder in Mac OS, and better yet, directly into Final Cut Pro. I assume this will, in a sense, use AirDrop to transfer the files, but my hope is that under the hood improvements will make it faster and more reliable than AirDrop currently is, especially since you'll be able to drag into a folder of your choosing in Finder instead of having to retrieve your AirDropped items from your downloads folder. And hopefully the video files that get transferred aren't getting compressed or altered in order to make this feature work reliably. If you get the original media when using iPhone mirroring, that'll be great. All right, so that wraps up recapping what we saw that was directly related to Final Cut Pro during the WWDC keynote. But there was plenty, and I mean plenty that I saw that could play a significant role in the future of Final Cut Pro. Now, as we dive into this discussion of the future of our video editing tools, it got me thinking about one of my favorite brands, Lens Distortions. Lens Distortions makes exceptional cinematic music and effects for filmmakers and content creators. And better yet, these guys know that subscription fatigue is real and they believe the future is you choose how you buy. So Lens Distortions is now offering both a la carte products and subscription options. Lens Distortions has some of the highest quality sound effects packs, video overlays, and LUTs in the industry, so definitely check them out. And Lens Distortions has extended a special offer to all of you using the link in the description below, so check it out to see how you can save on either a subscription or a one-time purchase. And thanks, of course, to Lens Distortions for being this video's sponsor. Now, Apple Intelligence is a significant leap forward for Apple's lineup of operating systems, and you're going to see a ton of updates over the years that specifically relate to Siri and using the features of Apple Intelligence to make using your Apple devices simpler, more efficient, more intuitive, and therefore more delightful the customer experience is going to improve dramatically, and that's always been at the core of Apple's values. Now, currently, you can use the Photos app to search your entire catalog of photos in some really cool and profound ways. Most users don't know that Apple analyzes your photos to identify all kinds of different objects. If you remember taking a picture of a flower, you can type flower into the search bar, and you'll get every photo you have that contains a flower. If you took some photos of typewriters you saw at various antique shops, you can and search typewriter and all of your photos with a typewriter will come up in the results. As cool as that is, it's incredibly limited because if you want to search for photos of purple flowers, you're out of luck. That search query won't return anything. But with Apple Intelligence, that all changes. At this point, you might be asking, what does that have to do with Final Cut Pro? Well, I've been hoping for years that Apple would port over the search function within the Photos app to Final Cut Pro. Can you imagine being able to search through your footage based on what objects the software can see? Well, that dream was never realized, but during the WWDC keynote, Apple showed us how you'll be able to search videos and photos, finally. You'll be able to query the app with complex search terms like Maria cartwheeling in the grass. And these kinds of search queries are exactly what I've been talking about when it comes to Final Cut Pro. How can we use machine learning and what will be the power of Apple intelligence to more quickly find the media within our Final Cut Pro libraries that we need, even if we've meticulously logged all of our footage? And how will this feature allow us to not only search the visuals of a video, but the audio as well? If we remember an interviewee talking about a dangerous hike in Rocky Mountain National Park, we'll be able to search our footage for the precise moment where they mention that, and that means that we find what we need lightning fast which also means that we stay in the creative flow while we're editing. If Apple Intelligence and Siri become our assistant editor, logging our media as we import it into Final Cut Pro, this alone will revolutionize the editing process and rescue us from the time-consuming, 
tedious workflow of logging and transcribing every last second of all the footage we have in our library. Now, I'm not saying that there still won't be a need to do a lot of that work before an edit begins, especially with assistant editors. But I do think that during the editing process, the lead editor on a project will be able to find things quicker and more easily and rely less on accessing the extensive keywording, favoriting, and smart collections through all these technical methods that many of us currently use to find the media that we need. It'll be something that you just think you ask Siri to find it and those appropriate clips come up. So just imagine you're an editor and you're searching for take three of scene 36 Charlie and the second AC on set was incredible at slating every last setup. Apple Intelligence will have analyzed all the frames of every second of footage and it will see the slate and you'll be able to type in 36C take three into the browser search field and you'll get right to the exact take that you need. Even if Final Cut Pro lacks high-end features for pro workflows in the area of sound and color, how can editors resist this kind of power in their editing software? I'm already so in love with the magnetic timeline and the power of Final Cut's browser that I can't imagine editing in any other software. And the ability to perform incredibly complex search terms to find the clips you need in an instant? That would be revolutionary. And I think we'll see it in Final Cut Pro sooner than you think. The other NLEs, perhaps eventually, but I have a feeling it won't be as simple and elegant as Final Cut Pro. All right, so what else? Apple showed us how Apple intelligence will allow us to have Siri perform more complex, context-aware tasks. They showed an image on the screen where examples of these kinds of commands were given, and one stood out to me. Add this photo to the email I drafted to Medea and Josh. What kinds of voice commands can we give Siri within Final Cut Pro to have her help us edit a video? Could we tell her, for example, add all the clips I shot today to the footage event in my Final Cut Pro library? Could we take it a step further and tell her in addition to that to add all of the clips you just imported to my current timeline and set their duration to eight seconds? Could you tell her, show me all the shots I have from last Tuesday? Or could you tell her, add on-screen captions to the range I selected and use a sans serif font in bold with a mustard yellow color? Once you wrap your head around that kind of power, you can start to imagine the other commands you can issue within Final Cut Pro. What if you're editing a series of shots for a travel vlog and you want them to look like they were shot during sunset? Will you be able to select a group of shots in your timeline and tell Siri, make these selected shots look like they were shot during sunset? Apple intelligence will not only understand your complex command, but it will also draw upon everything it knows about what sunset photos and videos look like to give your shots that specific look. And that brings me to the next feature we saw that was packaged quite literally as magic. Image Wand. Apple's dipping its toes into generative AI and allowing us to remove unwanted objects or people from our photos. They've of course done this in that unique and delightful Apple way, and this certainly has to be coming to Final Cut Pro for iPad in the future. And while this feature is easiest to execute on still images, I have to imagine Apple is making sure it can be used just as effectively with videos, harnessing of course the power of AI. Pretty soon we'll be editing on our iPads with an Apple Pencil Pro and we'll image wand objects or lens flares or some dust that was on the image sensor of our camera. We'll image wand all that away and make our shots look exactly how we had hoped they'd look. Apple also showed how Apple intelligence can analyze text and provide summaries. And they showed us how the Notes app can record and transcribe audio and summarize those transcriptions as well. This has to be one of the easiest features to implement into Final Cut Pro in the browser. Well, Final Cut, finally be able to analyze some interview audio and give us a transcription along with a summary of what was said. That seems like a no-brainer for the Final Cut Pro team, and I hope we'll see a feature like this in Final Cut Pro 11 on day one. We also saw the addition of memory movies to the Photos app where you can use Apple intelligence to magically edit a home movie for you. How could this integrate into Final Cut Pro? They literally say how tedious it is to search through tons of photos and spend hours putting a simple video together. You have to search through tons of photos to pick out the best ones, figure out how to arrange them, and hunt for the right music. It can take hours of work. I know plenty of us dread staring at an empty timeline. Could you edit the first scene of a travel vlog by telling Apple Intelligence to edit a one minute scene using shots from the morning of my first day in Poland set to an energetic, uplifting score? Even if it's not that great, you at least have a rough draft to start from and you can enjoy revising it rather than building it from scratch. Now, if you're like me, you love to build it from scratch. That's the craft, 
and discipline of it, especially when it's your own work or a passion project. For others, the real joy is in the revising, so why not start out with a rough cut generated by Apple Intelligence and go from there? Maybe that magic edit button clients think exists will finally become a reality. Let's hope not. So if you, like me, got really, really inspired by the implementation of Apple Intelligence into Apple's various operating systems, let me know down in the comments what kinds of features you could see being added to Final Cut Pro to make our lives as visual storytellers and organizers of massive amounts of media significantly better. I know a lot of you still think Final Cut Pro is likely going to be scrapped entirely, but I am 100% confident that that is not going to happen. The creation of Final Cut Pro for iPad alongside Final Cut Camera, to me, shows a commitment from Apple to this app, and I firmly believe that Final Cut Pro for iPad is the key to ushering in a new era for Final Cut Pro for the Mac. Add to that that the Final Cut Pro team specifically told attendees to the Final Cut Pro Creative Summit in November that they have a five to six year plan for Final Cut Pro. If that doesn't instill confidence that FCP is here to stay, I don't know what will. Now, I fully expect Final Cut Pro 11 to mirror the design of Final Cut Pro for iPad and implement features like live multicam and intelligent soundtracks and lay the foundation for all of the features I mentioned earlier alongside the capabilities of Apple Intelligence and a completely overhauled Siri. With all of these additions to the Final Cut Pro ecosystem, I simply don't see a future where Final Cut Pro doesn't exist, and I certainly don't see a future where Apple isn't innovating Final Cut in profound ways to deliver us not only the features we've been asking for for years, but the features we didn't know we needed. But now that we have them, we can't imagine living without them. The future of Final Cut Pro is, in my opinion, looking very intelligent. Thank you.